Sheet metal was my livelihood, but I never thought I'd be building gear like this. Every week, we turn tons of steel into rolling works of art. Some of the toughest gear in the world comes out of this factory. Building this gear is only half the fun. No one tests like we do. My passion has taken my family to the edges of the earth. Life's a game. We know how to play it. Patriot Games. Previously on Patriot Games. The crew are stranded in the Mongolian countryside after the X-1 suffered damage that could only be repaired back at the Mongolian headquarters. But with no tilt trays in sight, this recovery is going to be a big one. How'd you go? How'd you go? We found a truck and it's coming. In when? About, in about 10 minutes it's going to come and be, we, we have to put it on the truck. Tonight? Yeah. yeah. A late night plan kicks into gear as the crew work to recover the X-1. But it was never going to be easy when stranded in the middle of remote Mongolia. No sucks. As I started reversing up, Matty just stopped it, you know, killed it straight away. I didn't even get half a metre. It just bent that ramp immediately. The ramps, the ramps just aren't going to cut it. With the ramps failing immediately, the team is forced to change tactics. Looks like it's back to the original plan. All right, so we found a spot, but it's a fair way. We're going to have to drag this trailer a fair way. There's two valleys that meet like this with like an old riverbed in the middle with a gully. Well, perfectly matched to his wheels. Coming, Justin? Yeah, mate, good. This friggin' sucks. Dude, this is the worst noise I've ever heard in my life. This yeah, you just, you just got to hang up on a rock here, right? Stop, 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 stop. No, no, you're okay, you're okay. Just pull the rock out of the ground. It's pretty good. Yeah, hold on. I've done some pretty wild stuff in my times. Um, I've had some of the highest highs that you could possibly have with your business and your family and your products. But now I think I've actually hit rock bottom and that is not a pun at all. That sound, it sounds to me like one of my kids screaming. That's what it sounds like to me. That's what's going through my head. It is just like, it is heartbreaking. But this is gonna be the first time I'm not gonna take one of my trailers home on one of my trips. I'm, 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 I'm just, I'm heartbroken. I'm completely heartbroken. With Justin slowly dragging the trailer into position, Maddie has manoeuvred the truck and the team is ready to start the recovery. Plan C. You got the truck uh, reverse up into a ditch, so it's not too far off the ground and we're gonna try to, um, Justin's dragging the trailer over here now. It's about two or 300 meter. And I'm not sure if we're gonna either forward the trailer on or reverse it on at this stage, but we'll get it here and, and we'll see what's going on when we get it. When we get situations like this, there's so many people that are, everyone's got an opinion, but we know as a team, there's one person in charge, that's Justin, and he needs a right hand, and he only gets directions from Matt. Otherwise, we all get confused. Yeah, you're right. Keep, keep going to your right. Yeah, keep going, keep going. Keep going to your right. Keep going that way. And now go hard right. Oh, hard, hard left, sorry. Yeah. Two guys on the mark here. Lights off. Yeah. So, one second. Do we want to go a bit further than that, though? Because uh, the ramp. Yeah, go another like, portal two. Straight ahead. Yeah, hard left, like you are now. 
Okay, yep, stop there, stop there. That's it, Dubs. Got it? Yep, we'll unhitch it here. Well done, mate. We're looking good so far. We've got the trailer where it needs to be. We'll get Justin to move the uh, 200 series out of the way. We'll reverse the truck up, and um, we've probably only got a couple of feet that we need to move the uh, trailer onto the, um, onto the truck. So, fingers crossed, we're going good. With the trailer in position and the truck now aligned, the crew do their best to get the truck bed as low as possible, giving them just the right angle to winch the trailer up onto the tray bed with relative ease. I can't even count how many times um, a winch has got me out of trouble um, in, in all sorts of situations. This is definitely a unique one though. I can't, can't see any tow truck up there no, doing this back home, mate. When there's no tilt trailers, you got to improvise. improvise eh? With only a single wheel on the trailer, Maddie's plan is to use the two Super Tura winches simultaneously to drag the X1 onto the bed of the truck. Yeah, I think this is going to be the main one because we're going to be trying to drag that drag side. Drag that side. So we're yep. going to be wanting to pull it this way anyway. Yep. So I think we might not even need that side yet okay. for a while. Yeah. All right, but um, we need to jack it up a, a, jack it up a little bit. Yeah, we'll get it right up here. Get it right on close and to the ramps. We'll okay. Yeah, this, this is really, really scary stuff, you know what I mean? Um, we've got everything rigged up. We're trying to be as safe as we possibly can. Uh, but it's still a little bit daunting, you know. There's, there's still a ton in that little trailer. The worst thing you can do in a situation like this is have 10 different chiefs. So we just let Matty take control, everybody does their job, he's, he's running the show, and we'll get it up there. Um, I'm, I'm fairly confident at this point in time. You are right? Let's see what can happen. Yep. 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 A bit more? Yeah. More? 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 Yeah, yeah. Good. Keep going. Keep going. Yeah, okay. Okay. Yeah, I think the plan is going very, very well so far. Um, but, you know, like we're replanning as we go, yeah? Either way, it's going to be very heavy. Yeah, yeah no, that's what I'm saying. Put a safety bridge underneath it. Well, it'll be just because you have to put it like four of us here, you'll be right. No, but I think like we should remove the ramp and then at least like a few people like over here. Yeah, okay. Put the draw bar on, on, onto here and then afterwards, yeah, afterwards you can position it again, yeah? Oh. yeah let's just try through it with your main choice. Pull! Pull! Pull, 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 pull. pull. Okay. We'll try to do it one more time. Yeah. All right, Matty, you call it when you want to pull. Yep. Okay. I pull. Yep. Yeah, thank you. It's on. Okay. Good. Good. Well done, guys. Good job. Are we too far over that way or are we right? No, we're okay. We're okay. All right. With the jockey wheel up and lifted, a feeling of progress hangs in the air. At nearly 4.20 a.m., it's about time we got this trailer on the truck. Using the tailgate as ramps now, with the strong box section frame, we can only hope they're strong enough to hold the X1, unlike our attempts earlier tonight. Um, the max track is just getting hung up on the ramp and pushing the ramp up, so I think we're going to lift it up now and put the max track underneath so the little stubs on it aren't then gripping on the edge of the ramp. Come back a bit more. Well, no, it's going to be a bit higher. It's not a bad thing. It's moving a lot, yeah? That's right, keep going. No, we have to go on the other one. Yeah. Leave the tension as it is on that one. As long as that, uh, 
that ramp holds up, we're going to be, be okay. Yep. Yeah, it's all starting to come together now. It's going to plan. We've got the trailer about halfway up the ramps. Uh, we're just slowly winching side by side, making sure everybody's nice and clear. Um, the tension, or the big load of tension is starting to come off it now. Um, the trailer is not far. It's just about to pop onto the truck now. Here we go. Yep. Okay, stop, stop, stop. Yeah, we're on. Other side. I go a bit more to me. We'll pull it right over. Okay. And then when we pull it that way, we'll centre it on the, on the truck. Oh, 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 oh. No, go the other way. <laughs> All right, we're on the truck. Okay. Major success. Well done, man. Good, Good job. Well done. Well done, Rob. Good job. Awesome. Well done. Matt. Nice work, Matt. Good, Good on you, mate. mate. Well done, dude. And that's it. It's been almost 10 hours since the X1 failed, and it's finally on the bed of the truck. Working through this freezing Mongolian night, this recovery will be one that the crew will remember for some time. Feels good. Feels good. You know, I think everyone's tired and just wants to just get, get over with, you know. Success, it's on. Um, amazing. Uh, the boys have done an amazing job. Maddie's controlled this whole thing. Absolutely awesome. This was the recovery from hell. I've never seen anything like this in my life. I don't think I'll ever see anything like this ever again. Um, but the trailer's on, it's gonna head back to Ulaanbaatar. Uh, we'll get it fixed up. I'll send the parts over from Australia and all is good. We can continue on tomorrow uh, doing what we do best, I think. The lack of resources here in remote Mongolia has made this recovery a difficult task. With no access to tools or heavy equipment, the team has had to pull together with what they had, with some help from the locals to recover this trailer and save the trip from ending. Back at our Mongolian headquarters, this X1 is now ready for its next adventure. And that's why Patriot campers are unstoppable. You boys all set? Yeah. Ready to roll? Yeah. All repacked. I can't believe we fitted all that gear into the car. So. Well, you're honest. A few extra things on the roof. How's everyone feeling? Tired. Tired. Oh, fresh as a daisy. That was, night. that was a big night. It was cold last And night. solid, solid effort came eh? It was cold. Hey? It was cold. It was freezing. Good effort. Everyone involved. Well done. Yeah? Christian Ashton, you probably could have done a little bit more, but you guys got tired, huh? Yeah, right. So, we're under the stars from now on out. Yeah, heartbreaking last night. Absolutely heartbreaking. Watching that thing drive out of here on the back of a truck. Just like, just like wrenching my heart out. Never seen it before. Never heard about it before. You know, it's not a, it's not a, a product failure. It's, it was operator error. It was just user error. I, I did the wrong thing. I should have been more cautious. Should have been watching where I was going. But, you know, hindsight's a beautiful thing, isn't it? I can't believe that trailer got onto that truck, mate. Yeah. I can't believe it actually got on there. Yeah. Well, I thought after that first attempt, this yeah. it's not going to happen. You know? It went pretty smooth once it was down there. Yeah, just took a long time. I'm thinking after cold dragging all the way up there. <laughs> no, this you should have heard it from camp. Time. It sounded terrible. You should have heard it from really outside the window. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> when, when we got back last night, she was still wide awake. She was freaking out. It had been hours. Um, I'm sitting at camp. It felt like all night long with the kids. Uh, my head was racing, going over all these different scenarios of what could go wrong. Um, I just hoped that everything was okay uh, down with the boys because I couldn't make contact. Last night would have would definitely by far be the toughest recovery that we've ever done. The initial element of the unknown of how we're actually going to do this and is there tow trucks out here? Is there tilt beds? How's it going to work? And when the um, when the truck rocked up, we were like, well, we have to do something here and get inventive. And it took a while, but at the end of the day, we got it done. And that's all that matters. And now the uh, 
the trail is on the truck heading on its way back to um, Ellen Butter. I'll tell you what, I feel a little bit lighter now, huh? Yeah, you want to lead the convoy? You won't be able to keep up with me, man. Don't forget about me. And there's only one way to find out. I don't need to be breaking any more of your gear to me. I'm happy staying right here. The crew are still a couple of hundred kilometres away from the fishing spot that will become base camp for the next week. So it's time to get back on the road. While the crew need to bank these kilometres, it's not something they can do on an empty stomach. Ooh. How do you even find joint top of this way? No, I think I'm just on the road, like when we just came in. Yeah. I asked like this guy on a motorbike, is there any restaurants or cafes around? And then the guy goes, eh, what's that? And then he like, passed by. <laughs> so I'm like, okay, whatever. And then I came across this uh, ladies on, on this um, on this truck over here, you know? Yeah. yeah. So, Hey, is there any restaurant? I said, I am the restaurant. <laughs> That's what the lady said, yeah? She's like, oh, yeah. I said, wait, what you got? And then she's like, I got the dumplings already. Okay. So, okay, 100 of them. 100 dumplings? 100. You ordered 100? Yes. Yeah. Okay, that's 10 each. 10 each, yeah. Like, Roughly. That's a lot of dumplings. That's a lot of dumplings. That's a lot of... Well, to do it, it's 20. Angry. Okay, this is, um, this is different. I think to me, it made a pretty good call. Tamir's got a very, very big appetite, and we're getting to know that throughout the trip. <laughs> this guy, don't let him fool you. Can I don't think I've ever met anybody in my life that actually eats as much as him, besides basically the twins combined. And he doesn't function very well without food either. He knew what was going to happen this afternoon. We were going to fly straight into camp. We are going to spend the rest of the day in the car. We weren't going to eat. Tamir gets very hangry, uh, so he's booked us into this little dumpling hut, the only restaurant, probably within a thousand kilometre radius, and the dumplings are amazing. Mm. Really good, huh? Oh, they're good. They're real good. The dumplings good. They've got this, um, like, definite flavour to them. It's a very, like, Mongolian flavour. Well, I can't explain it, but it's different and it's across like a lot of the meats that we've been eating um, during the trip. Well this is definitely a unique experience but these dumplings are absolutely amazing. Since successfully recovering the broken X1, the team are back on the road to reach their final base camp destination. But first, there's just one more thing Justin has to tick off the bucket list. Yo, Tamir, how far out do you reckon we are? About 30 kilometres, that's it. You know what I'm thinking? I'm thinking it's Polaris time, dude. I haven't had a drive of that buggy this trip yet. What do you reckon we get it off and I'll drive it into camp? No, that's it's gonna be nice. Uh, we're gonna do like a few more water crossings. I think there's one that's coming up now. Yeah, copy that. I'm happy to do a water crossing in the Polaris. Matty, you can get that Polaris off, dude? Get it off the trailer, dude. Let's yeah, go. That's a good spot right there. Roger that. Okay, um, you wanna come with me? We'll see, let's see how deep it is. I'm gonna go one pair of shoes. You wanna come with me or not? We'll see. Come on, you're coming with me. Dad um, or Bobby, I need someone to drive the 200. Um, Miss Sarah is gonna come with me for the adventure. Yeah, I've been itching this whole trip to get on the Polaris, and you know what? I think I'm missing my X1. I need another toy. Um, and I figure, you know, we're coming to the end of the trip. Look at this country around me, it's absolutely gorgeous. I'm not wasting this thing. I'm gonna, I'm gonna drive this thing into camp this afternoon. You wet my shoes, it's over. You ready? I'll do the horse. Driving. Uh, definitely in performance. Standard. Full drive. Engaging. Beat up. Low range.
we just keep following this road, will this run us pretty much straight into the campsite? More or less, yes. Okay, cool. Well, I think we might make it there. Okay, where are you heading to? We might go to uh, have a look at what this land's got to offer. <laughs> the top of the world. Hey? <laughs> top of the world, look at this. Yeah, look at the rocks around, that's pretty freaky, look. It's, it's, it's scaly yeah. Awesome. Yeah. Gorgeous. Good spot. Gorgeous. What a way to wind it up, huh? This is spot. How long are we staying yeah. here for? A week, right? <laughs> We're staying here for a week? Yeah? yeah. Why not? Gorgeous. And so, so which, is it flowing that way? Yeah. yeah it's way. flowing that way. It looks like it's flowing this way. Though. Yeah, that, well, I think that's just the wind blowing on top of it. Yeah. But it's definitely flowing back that way because those rivers were going that way. Like that, that part is the small one. This is the big one. Okay. So, and then that's the part that's connecting with the, like, you know, the lake and then flows into a river. So, just trout in here? Yeah. Just trout? Yeah. Do you catch them in the still, like the lake area, or in the rapids? In the rapids, that, you know, that's what I'm. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, over in the rapids. Awesome. Daru, can we get across that river in the Polaris? Yes. Perfect. <laughs> that's what he was looking at straight away. He's on it. He's all over it. Get up there, get wood, get a fire going. Get food, and the most important ingredient, mate? Beer. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, this yep. is a very pleasant way to end off the trip. Pleasant, good word. <laughs> Where'd you learn that? You've been with Nono, you've been with Nono. <laughs> I've been in the car with Nono for like two hours and you're talking like you're 70 days. <laughs> huh? Literally just been learning about like nettles and stuff. <laughs> yeah. About like welding <laughs> and mace cutting. <laughs> Words. And the different types of steels. Yep. Yeah. 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 Christian likes listening to you. And Lord. Christian likes listening to you. It's a bad time. All the other kids have finished listening to him, so Dad's now got these. So. Well, yesterday, when, when Nonu was talking, Christian was just like, everyone, we've got to listen to yeah. Nonu. Yeah. Okay. So what's wrong with that? Good. That's good. That is yeah, because he's wise. Oh, 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 oh. Oh, oh, oh. Yeah, he's riding a pedic on my wheel. <laughs> Are you born him a new push bike or something? Is that, is that what happened in the car? Nah. What time is it now? It's uh, quarter past seven in the afternoon. We just arrived at, at, the, um, at the destination and it's absolutely beautiful. Um, to me, he couldn't have chosen a better spot. Mongolia just keeps on putting it on. It's hard to believe that this country could get uh, more pretty than what we've seen over the past couple of weeks, but this spot uh, that we're going to finish this trip up on is just its absolutely magic. And the disappointment of not having the X1 it's it's long gone. I think this is this is uh, pretty adventurous for us. It, it brings us back to the grassroots. Sarah and I are going to be out underneath the stars, or under a tarp under the stars, 
kids are going to be piled up in the rooftop tent um, for the night. It's, it's going to be pretty cool. Fires going on over there. I think everyone's got a fresh sense of life into them again. The past couple of days have been hard. They've been really trying. Um, but to wind up the trip this way, it's, um, it, it's just gorgeous. Absolutely beautiful way uh, to end an amazing adventure. Hey Justin, so here it is, the X1 that we took on the season three of Patriot Games through Mongolia. And guess what? Everything that you broke, we fixed it. Not a single scar on it, yeah? The axle, the wheels, the body parts, the panels and everything, it's all fixed. Good as new. Check that out, yeah? This is the exact one that we took. Back at ya. Next time on Patriot Games, the crew heads to their final destination in Mongolia, which happens to be Bayara's favourite fishing spot. The crew begins to wind down after their longest touring trip to date and enjoys their final days at base camp, soaking in their epic surroundings.